I'm Tyler Vanderweel at Harvard University and will be presenting today on flourishing and the global flourishing study. I'll make some remarks on the concept of flourishing, our attempts to assess flourishing, and then talk about this new research endeavor, the Global Flourishing Study. Uh, more information on the conception of flourishing I'll be presenting is in this 2017 paper in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. More information on the Global Flourishing Study can be found on our program's website. If we turn to our institutions and academic disciplines, we often find that they aspire to very grand visions of human flourishing. The World Health Organization's definition of health from 1948, still in place today, is that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Discipline like economics or psychology likewise aspire to grand visions of flourishing. But in practice, many of our discussions and studies are restricted to much narrower outcomes, specific disease states, simple measures of feeling happy, or just to income. So what is flourishing? If we turn to our dictionaries, the Oxford English Dictionary, for example, defines flourishing as to grow or develop in a healthy or vigorous way. The etymology of the term comes from Latin florere, to bloom, blossom, or flower. The working definition we've been using at the Human Flourishing Program at Harvard is that flourishing, or a complete state of well-being, is living in a state in which all aspects of a person's life are good. So very broad, but this is arguably what we're after as individuals and should be seeking as a society. I think the discipline that's come closest to trying to assess this is that of positive psychology and numerous conceptualizations and measures of psychological well-being have been introduced. Um, but notably absent from these measures of psychological well-being are any notion of physical health and are we really fully flourishing if we're bedridden or seriously ill? Often missing from these conceptualizations is any notion of character or virtue. Um, contrary to Plato, Aristotle, uh, most of the Western philosophical tradition and really um, philosophical and religious traditions worldwide. Um, but with a conception so broad, it's never really possible to measure or assess flourishing. And moreover, won't conceptions um, differ across individuals and cultures and religious and theological traditions? Can we ever really achieve consensus? And while I think it is the case that well-developed conceptions of flourishing will vary across traditions, what I would argue is that however flourishing is understood, any reasonable conception of flourishing would include the following five domains of human life. Not that flourishing is reducible uh, to these five, but each is a part of it. These five are happiness and life satisfaction, physical and mental health, meaning and purpose, character and virtue, and close social relationships. Again, I would not argue that these exhaust flourishing, but each is a part of it. I think each of these domains also satisfies the following two criteria. Each is nearly universally desired, and we have some empirical data on this as well. Um, and each is an end in and of itself. It's sought for its own sake. It's not merely a means to some other end. And I think these two criteria, being nearly universally desired and being an end, might help shape consensus around what to measure. As a very brief, crude assessment of flourishing, we've proposed um, an index which takes two questions in each of these five domains, drawn principally from the existing work on uh, well-being questions regularly used in practice that have received some degree of empirical validation. Uh, the only two questions which are newly proposed here um, are those in the character domain, where we worked with um, philosophers to develop more global assessments based on the tradition of the cardinal virtues. Uh, so the five um, domains and the 10 questions we are using are as follows. Uh, first, with happiness and life satisfaction, how satisfied are you with life as a whole these days? Scored zero, completely unsatisfied, to 10, uh, completely satisfied. This is one of the most widely used well-being questions in the literature by the OECD, um, by the UK's annual survey, and many other surveys as well. We supplement that with something more effective on feeling happy, in general, how happy or unhappy do you usually feel? Um, second domain, physical and mental health questions taken from the U.S. General Social Survey and the uh, World Health Organization's Mental Health Survey. In general, how would you rate your physical health? Zero to ten. How would you rate your overall mental health? Zero to ten. Uh, third domain, meaning and purpose. Overall, to what extent do you feel the things you do in your life are uh, worthwhile? Again, used by OECD, UK's annual survey, and others. And we supplement that with something more cognitive. I understand my purpose in life. Zero completely disagree to ten completely agree. The fourth domain, character and purpose. First question intended in some crude way to try to assess practical wisdom and justice. I always act to promote good in all circumstances, even in difficult and challenging situations. Zero completely untrue of me to 10 completely true of me. And then a second question intended in some crude way to assess fortitude or courage and, and temperance or moderation. Um, I'm always able to give up some happiness now for a greater happiness later. 
And then the fifth domain, close social relationships. These two questions were taken from the UK's Campaign to End Loneliness Assessment of Short Survey Items. Um, first, I'm content with my friendships and relationships intended to capture the quantity or extent of those relationships. And then secondly, my relationships are as satisfying as I would like them to be intended to capture the quality of those relationships. In our research, we typically uh, look at these five domains separately, but we'll sometimes uh, average the questions for an overall um, flourishing assessment. Um, but this really should be understood as nothing other than a composite of those five more meaningful domains. We typically supplement these 10 questions with two others on financial and material stability intended as important means to sustain those other ends. And these two questions are, um, how often do you worry about being able to meet normal monthly living expenses? Short to 10, how often do you worry about safety, food, or housing? Um, as an example of how this sort of assessment can be useful, this is um, data from the United States in a roughly nationally representative sample, um, both uh, prior to the WHO declaration of the COVID-19 pandemic in January of 2019, and also in the midst of the pandemic in June 2020. In January 2020, uh, most of these domains had an average score of about seven. Uh, the one exception was financial and material stability, which was a full point lower. Um, unsurprisingly, during the COVID-19 pandemic, well-being in these various domains went down on average, but it affected um, some domains more than others. Um, it, we saw substantial declines in happiness and life satisfaction, physical and mental health, and financial and material stability, about a point in each of these domains. Um, but the declines were much smaller with regard to meaning and purpose, uh, with regard to character assessments, um, and, and even with regard to close social relationships somewhat uh, surprisingly. But assessments like this help us understand what's going well, uh, what's not, who might need help, and how are things changing over time. So we've been carrying out these sorts of assessments in a number of different settings, workplace settings, clinical uh, settings, educational settings. We've embedded it, uh, this assessment into various cohort um, studies to try to empower research in this area. And we hope by these assessments, we'll be able to better understand the distribution and determinants of well-being, um, but also to give communities a sense, once again, of what's going well, what's not, who needs help, how are things changing over time. And so our most recent research uh, initiative is uh, this Global Flourishing Study, um, which is a partnership between the Human Flourishing Program at Harvard and Baylor's Institute for the Studies of Religion with data collection to be carried out by Gallup and um, funding from the Templeton Philanthropies and a number of other funders uh, as well. This study will consist of 240,000 individuals in 22 um, geographically and culturally and religiously diverse uh, countries representing roughly half of the world's population will be doing nationally representative sampling with Gallup in each of these countries and then we'll be following the same cohort of 240,000 individuals annually um, for at least five years uh, to understand the distribution of flourishing in, in year one and then as time goes on the factors that shape um, these different aspects of uh, flourishing. We'll be asking a rich set of well-being questions, including the flourishing index questions, but other well-being questions also, and also looking at the various um, social and family and childhood and, 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 and religious and political and economic and demographic contexts that help give rise to flourishing. We'll be able to ask questions along the lines of you know, what factors most powerfully affect these different aspects of flourishing? Um, how does this vary by country and cultural context? and what might be universal. This will be an open access uh, data resource hosted by the a Center for, for, for Open Science, so the data will be publicly uh, uh, available. And so we hope that this study helps us understand the distribution and determinants of well-being, um, helps us to do so with our own research teams, but helps others around the world to better study, um, understand, and hopefully ultimately contribute to human flourishing. Thank you.